I've included in your kit this fabulous uh, black frame. I love it because it's really, really deep. That way you can hang it on a wall if you want to, or it sits straight up and it would look great also um, on a shelf or a bookcase. I've gone ahead and installed the substrate, the mosaic backing for you, and here's the easel. Um, I like to just go ahead and mosaic it just like it is with the substrate, the mosaic base already installed. But if you want to take it out, you can. There's these little things called point drivers in here, and you can take it out to do your mosaic without the frame. If you do that, see these little pencil lines? You'll want to draw a line where your mosaic should go. That way it will still fit in your frame. If you go beyond those lines, it's when you go back to install it in your frame, it's not going to fit right. So I don't have a problem with just going ahead and doing my uh, with it already in the frame. You'll see, can you see this little T there? I put a T there for the top because there's my easel. That way I know that this is the top. That's the top of my mosaic design. So before we get started actually creating your mosaic, I want you to take a good look at my sample here. The idea is that this wildflower garden is kind of an impressionist style. It's not exactly like what every little flower would look. Think of an impressionist painting. That's kind of what you're going for. There's no particular uh, 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 a pattern as to where you put the glass. It is totally random other than you'll see we were kind of balanced high here, high here. The colors are a little bit balanced as well but it's still very free form, very random. Um, you'll kind of design it as you go along. The uh, sky is the very same way. You'll see that the glass is set in a different direction here than it is here. Um, we call that uh, flow of mosaic andamiento, so it's more interesting to the eye. But when you're setting, remember that it's random. It's supposed to look like an impressionist painting and not exactly like a perfect garden. I wanted to show you the beautiful art glass that's, that goes into your wildflower garden kit. I'm a firm believer in using beautiful materials. Beautiful materials help make a beautiful mosaic. And this is some gorgeous glass. Here are some of the greens that I use for your petals. Um, pretty, pretty oranges and reds and yellows for your flowers. I'm crazy about this pink that I've been cutting for the flower petals as well for the little color pops. Um, there's some of the blues that you'll see for your uh, sky. And I like to include, I love this color. This kind of deep violet looks pretty in the background of the sky as well. And I also include some of this yellow to give little pops of color for the sunlight coming in from one direction. You'll also get a few of these lovely little doodads. These are called Mili Fiore, Italian for a thousand flowers. And a few of these will make a beautiful, let's make sure you can see these, a beautiful center for some of your flowers. If you've ordered the beginner kit, I pre-cut all of this glass for you and shape it so you don't have to use any tools. What I use are three tools, a glass of score, running pliers, and indispensable glass tile nippers. If you have ordered the... Um, intermediate kit I send you all this glass probably about a square foot in all the different colors for you to use your tools and cut and shape for your own mosaic creation so take a look at how I um, cut and shape this glass for you um, thought you might enjoy seeing this also if you've ordered the intermediate kit and you just need a little primer this might help. So I'm going to make some of the longer stems like this. And I know I score down. A lot of you glass order, artists score up. I think it's just habit. Um, created a score. Oh, it helps to use the right side, doesn't it? And there are some long pieces. Also, for your leaves and your shorter pieces, I like to just run with my running pliers, pretty simple. 
and these create the longer pieces and there's they're kind of organic looking um, they make great little leaves for these pretty little pieces here I've cut these out of the bigger glass and I've just used my um, wheeled nippers to do that um, when you're using wheeled nippers and nipping, I always say nip down. Don't all oh, nip like this because the pieces will go flying across the table. Also nip into a container. Um, that helps sort of um, control your shards and you don't get them all over the place. But this is um, a process where I just sort of nip along. Hoping you can see this. Little bitty pieces at a time till I get sort of a rough circle. And I will do hundreds of these. I'm doing it kind of slow for you, but I'll do hundreds of these till I get these little bitty pieces for you. Um, the sky, once again, I want sort of organic cuts, so I'm going to use my wheeled nippers for that um, and go like that, and I get lots of organic shapes. Now I do have to refine sometimes, even though, sorry, I keep hitting my camera, refine. So I don't like these square edges. I don't think they look very organic, so I'll come back and sort of work on those. And then when you're creating your sky, these can all fit together like so. Let's talk real quick about safety. Remember that this is glass that we're working with. Some of the pieces I send you have pointy, pointy, sharp edges. So I want you to be careful. If you're working with kids, holy moly, please, a lot of supervision. Um, keep a brush around. I like to use an old uh, paintbrush. You can see sometimes, especially if you're nipping, you might get little shards on your table. You certainly don't want to use your hand to brush that off. It will cut you. So you want to clean your work area a lot. I also like to use a tray or a box, and I lay out all my tessera, my uh, mosaic pieces there, so if there's any shards or whatever, they don't get on my workspace. Also, if you are doing any nipping, Using wheeled nippers, glass nippers, nip down, don't nip across because it'll go flying across the table, or, and also nip down into a container so you contain, see all those little bitty shards in there? So you contain your shards. As you are creating your mosaic, here's one that's in progress, you'll want to make sure that each little piece of glass is lying flat. You don't want anything that is askew and leaning up and uh, because that way you would have sharp edges sticking up which will be an issue perhaps when we start grouting so keep those things in mind safety always even though this glass is this these pieces are beautiful they are indeed glass So to get organized before you start doing your mosaic, I like to lay all my glass out and take a good look at it. Don't lay it out on your work surface. Use a tray or a box or something to lay it out on. Even though I have pre-cut all this glass, you'll see there might be some little glass shards and such, and you don't want that on your work surface. I like to get organized. I have my tessera, my little glass pieces all cut and kind of organized so I know what to choose from. Tools wonderful water-based glue, Q-tip, always need that. Uh, sometimes I like to use a little pokey tool. This is simply a toothpick. Tweezers, optional. These are mosaic tweezers, so they're long and bendy, but you can use your regular Health and Beauty Aid tweezers as well. And glass tiled nippers, which is, are totally optional. I have cut all this glass for you, but if this is the beginner kit, um, you would enjoy using them because you can refine things a little bit, but it's not necessary to create your mosaic. I will include both the tweezers and the uh, glass tile nippers um, as an optional add-on to your So let's get started mosaicing. Um, what I do recommend is that you take your largest elements first and randomly, this is about the right amount of glue. 
real easy to use. Randomly spread them out. Let's see, that's pretty long too. And kind of get a balance there of your biggest pieces. Maybe going in different directions. If you get a little bit of glue on your fingers, no worries with this. This is water-based. It's not toxic. It's not going to hurt you. It washes off real easily. And I think I like how that looks. Pretty scientific, huh? Then I'm just going to go in and randomly um, fill in some other pieces. Some bigger pieces. I like this. I think I'll put this on the side because it's square. That looks good. You can see this glue is real easy to work with. It doesn't set up right away. So you can move things around real easily. Kind of scoot them around and get them where you want them to go. Well, I like this piece. Look at this piece here. I don't know if you can see this. It has a little texture on it. I'm going to include that right there. Now, I don't have to fill in every little area. We'll kind of come back and fill in as we go. Um, get a little bit bigger piece there. And right there, follow it up. And I'm kind of making this up as I go, aren't I? Yes, I am. So I'm going to continue along, and then we'll go to the next step. So I have uh, glued down my tallest pieces, my largest elements. Then I went to the next size, and I glued those down. You can see I'm kind of thinking about leaves now. I'm kind of doing a little bit different direction. Um, I've left some blank spaces down here for fun, and I want to show you what we're going to do with those because these are little glass beads that I sometimes call cheaters. Um, if you want to use some of those, you use a little bit more glue than you normally would here. So you kind of create like a little bed of glue. Oops, sorry about that. And um, put those down in the bed of glue. You want to make sure that all of the little pieces, all of the little round pieces connect with that glue. Um, they're not flat, so we want to make sure that they have plenty of glue to connect to. I like using these because they're great for filling in places. Plus, they're pretty. I think they kind of add a little um, texture and a little interest and make things look even a little bit more organic. I think I'll do a few more down here. Um, your tweezers may come in handy for this, but you don't need them. Um, I'm just going to fill in with a few more of these because I like them. Looks like that piece here may need a little bit more glue. Remember, this glue is going to dry clear. So if you get some white stuff on the top of it, it's not an issue. Plus, when we grout, I'll show you how to sort of take care of that. Um, maybe I'll do a few more of them over there. Yeah, I like it. Perfect. Now let's. I'm going to start playing now with my little pops of color. Um, I'm not going to be creating a particular flower. Just really pops of color, like you would see maybe in a in a wildflower garden where there's a little bit of everything growing there. So, just going to kind of work on adding some pops of color and. I'll continue on this, and this is the fun part. I like doing that part. So I've been adding to the uh, wildflower garden. You'll see it's real random. I don't want you to think when you're gluing your pieces down of leaving room for grout. Grout will always find its way. You want to get them as close as possible, but also see these little gaps here? That's fine. Grout, grout will fill them in. Um, grout will really offer a lot of contrast to the direction that your glass is going. So you can see I've got some different directions going and uh, different shades of green. Once it's grouted, it's really going to pop. Um, I've included some of these little pieces for you. These are called um, Mili Fiori, which is just Italian for a thousand flowers. And they're little pieces of sliced glass. And I think occasionally they're sort of fun to put as the center of a 
flower because they're just so doggone pretty. And I'm going to do a bunch of this um, pretty pink, just kind of in a random order here. Um, maybe a bigger one. Like I said, you can always move these things around. Um, maybe down here some more pink because that's a big flower, huh? bit more pink and like I said it's totally random and that's a pretty pop of color I really like that and I have that big space right in there I kind of move this around I'm going to fill that in with um, a piece of glass here keep bumping into my camera I'm sorry about that and let's put another little piece of pink in here and I think I'm beginning to like it. Yeah, round it out. Maybe I'll build some more pink because I just like it. No right or wrong. Now you've got lots of these little bitty pieces included in. What you're going to do with those is just sort of fill in here. When you have see places, you can fill in. Um, all different sizes. So I'm going to work with that. It looks like we've got a lot of red over here. Or maybe I'm going to try to add a little bit more red over here on the other side just to balance my colors a little bit. And we're rolling right along. Well, I'm almost finished with my bottom part. I've been having a great time. It's, it's really a chill out time. I hope you enjoy doing this. Uh, I always say pour yourself a glass of wine or a nice cup of tea and kind of enjoy the process. And um, I'm down to the little bitty spaces. And that's what all these tiny little things are for, to just sort of um, randomly fill in. Um, take a good look and make sure that you look balanced as you didn't, don't have all your flowers on one side or all your one color on the other side. Uh, balance things out. I'm going to put that right there because I think it looks just fine. And um, here's another little triangle I can put there. Perfect. Perfect. Got some space there. Um, I might put this little one that looks like a leaf there. And put that right there. Um, I'm going to add a little piece of pink here because I see that little indentation. I want to fill it up. And right in here, I think I'll add a leaf, something that looks like a leaf. Perfect! I like it, I like it, I like it. Yeah, so I think we're looking balanced, and I have not had to use my nippers once. So, um... Just sort of fill it in, go with the flow. This is really going to pop when we grout this. I love to use black grout um, because it really creates drama and contrast, and we're going to love it. So the next step is to move on to our field, which is the background of the sky. And um, you can do this here at the same time or wait till this dries and come back to it tomorrow and work on the sky. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, so I've set my bottom part, the leaves and the stems and the flowers. You'll see it's sort of random. You don't have to go. Um, it depends on how far you want to go. When I send you your glass tessera, it doesn't mean you have to use every little piece. You choose where you want it to go and how much you want to use. So we're going to next go on to creating our uh, the top part, the, the sky. I want to take my brush here and just brush everything off. This is set. I've given this at least 12 hours to set, so everything's glued on pretty well. I want to make sure there's no little glass shards anywhere and nothing that could cut me or get in my way. So, 
I've organized as well. Here's my all my glass tessera, my glass pieces, my yellows, this pretty violets, the clear whites, light blue, dark blue, and these little things that we're going to use. I don't know if you can see these. These are clear, little tiny clear, round, smooth glass pebbles. I call them cheaters, and you were going to use them to fill in little places. And they also kind of give the impression of almost like stars in the sky. So I like that. So let's get started building our sky. I'm going to start here in the upper left hand corner um, and kind of create an illusion of the sunlight. Um, use my handy Q-tip. And I'm going to start with the yellows. Now, these clear pieces, um, you can see these are a little transparent. I want to make sure when you use those that there is absolutely plenty of glue underneath those. You want to make sure that the glue is totally coating underneath those clear pieces. Um, when we start grouting, I'll kind of tell you why. Um, once again, I know I sound like a broken record, don't I, with that word random, but it is random. There's no perfect way. Um, once again, lots of glue. Oops. My glue went flying. Lots of glue underneath those transparent pieces. Um, maybe move on to that yellow. We're using a different setting design. Um, we're setting straight across versus our garden was setting straight up. So that's going to be very interesting to the eye. Your pieces do not have to go absolutely straight across. You can manage, uh, you can undulate them. Is that the right word? Undulate? Maybe we'll undulate them. Um, but I'm going to start here with the yellows. Once again, if you get some glue on top, no worries. We'll deal with that later. All right, moving right along. Then I think I'm going to go maybe add some of these pretty kind of frosted glass. Can you see how pretty frosted white? Add some of that. And I'm making this up totally as I go. You see these opaque pieces, meaning light does not show through them. I don't need to use quite as much glue on those. These frosted pieces are a little bit see-through, so let's use a little bit more glue on those. And now I think I'm going to start to go into this, into the lighter colors. And I like these pretty violet pieces. I'm sort of kind of thinking of the night sky, I guess, with these violet pieces. And fit them together. You have some gaps, but that's okay. Grout will fill that in. I have a saying, everybody makes fun with me. All my students make fun of it. I say, grout is your friend, and it truly is. We also are going to use some of those pretty um, clear pebbles to fill in in pieces here and there. So I'm going to move on then to my darker colors. Then I'm going to move on to my lighter colors and my lighter colors here in the bottom. And I'll catch up with you in a minute. Well, I've been moving along, creating the mosaic, and I've really been enjoying this. You know, I've created thousands of mosaic pieces of mosaic art, but I can't tell you how much I still enjoy doing this. What a good time this has been for me, just chilling out and creating this random sky. I've gone from the yellows to the clears to this violet to the darker colors, and I'm going to finish up here with the lighter blues. Um... I think I've got a little direction going, a little, what do we call that, undulation. So let's finish this up. Um, we're going to probably have to use some of these tinier pieces that I've included for you to fit in here to some of these crooks and crannies in the, um, 
in your garden. So, another crooks and crannies. Let's see. Once again, I'm making this up as I go. I'm not adding pieces. I'm not laying it down and then adding it. Ooh, what have I got in here? I've got, oh, I've got one of those little uh, glass pebbles stuck in there. Um, this is a really super chill, fun time for me too. So I'm gonna continue on here, but I wanna show you these gaps. Um, you can just leave those. Grout will fill them in. But if you want to for fun, you can use some of these little um, clear glass pebbles. Once again, it's like the green pebbles we did on the bottom. They need lots of glue. Um, they need to be able to sit into the glue. So if you want to play with those, those are fun. I see a little gap there. I keep hitting my camera. Can you see that? I'm going to fill that in there. And here's a smaller one. I may put two in there, actually. There we go. Um, there's a little area there. There's plenty of glue in there. So those are just sort of fun to do if you choose to, and you certainly don't need to. I'm going to put a little bit more glue in that little open space there. And add these little pebbles. Excellent. And then I'm going to move along and um, finish setting the blues. And then we're going to be all done. I want you to remember that this is your work of art. Um, it's not going to look exactly like mine. It's not intended to. You're going to make it up as you go, and it's going to be yours, not mine. But I'm just kind of giving you a road map here, an idea of how to do it. Um, and this glue is such that if you don't like where something is, pick it up and move it around. It doesn't have to stay there. The glue takes about 12 hours to set. Um, so when we're finished here, we're going to have to wait a while till we grout. Sorry. Um, so maybe tomorrow you can grout. And coming up next is my grout tutorial. So I'm going to mix the grout now for the mosaic project. I have sent you approximately uh, five ounces of black sanded grout, my favorite color. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you to take about, oh, uh, maybe a, not even quite a teaspoon of grout and put it aside in a separate cup. Keep it dry. Do not get it wet. So in mixing the grout, the, generally, the ratio is uh, six to one, six ounces or six parts grout, one part water. It's really important when we mix the water with this that we do it very, very, very slowly. You don't want your grout ever to be too runny. You can't take the water out of it once you put it in there. So I have measured uh, just about one ounce of water, and I've got five ounces of grout. I'm going to add it real slowly. You can see I'm using an old nasty container in a cottage cheese or sour cream container. Hate to throw away anything. And I just added a little bit. I'm going to stir slowly. And be sure to mix from the bottom as well. Take your time. What we're going for is a consistency like mashed potatoes, um, cookie dough. Definitely not too runny. So I've added this just a little bit at a time. I'm not even going to use all my water. I'm going to use just a tad bit more, just a little couple drops. Stir that some more. I'm liking the way that's looking. Let's take a look. That's about right. And I didn't even use my whole a one ounce of water. So I'm going to let this sit for maybe three or four minutes. Then come back and give it another stir, and we're going to start to grout our mosaic. Grouting it is my favorite time. I call it the big reveal. We get to see what the mosaic is going to look like when it's finished. 
So time to grout this beauty. I know it doesn't look like we have much grout, but trust me, this is plenty of grout. I've let this set up for just a, two or three minutes and it's tried to dry up. I'm gonna give it like one little drop of water and we're in good shape. So there's no scientific method to grouting. Just throw it on there, blop it on. I've sent you a, a sponge that has this wonderful grout float on it. I really don't want you using your fingers too much because this is glass and so you can use this grout float to smush everything around and smush it in. I haven't taped off the frame. You can do that if you'd like to with some painter's tape, but I really don't think it's necessary. We're using black grout. It's a black frame. Um, it wipes off pretty easily. I've done a few of these, so I know. Um, get it in all the creeks and crevices. Spread it around. You'll see that it doesn't look like much grout, but it goes pretty far. Get that out of my way. There we go. Pretty scientific, huh? Smush it in, smush it around. Make sure you get in all the corners. And that looks good to me. We're going to let this sit uh, for probably about five minutes, and then we're going to come back and clean it up. Okay, so I let this uh, grout sit for about five minutes, kind of let it set up a little bit. We're going to use paper towels next. Um, we are not going to use a damp or wet sponge. We use the dry method for a glass mosaic. This is not a tile work. This is a work of glass mosaic art. So the paper towels will protect your hands from the grout. I don't have to worry about uh, from the glass. You don't have to worry about getting cut or anything. But you're just going to kind of dry it off. Be pretty aggressive here. You may have to go through a lot of uh, paper towels, kind of rub it in and rub it off at the same time. Um, if you lose any of these little, um, what I call the cheaters, the little glass beads, um, don't worry about it. It happens. Um, sometimes those are hard to glue on properly. And grout will fill in wherever that is. So this is the big reveal. Look at it starting to come to life. So be patient with this. Lots of paper towels. You'll need to clean out their corners, but we can do that. Oh, see, I lost a little uh, cheater there. No worries. I'm going to fill that in with black grout, and you'll never know it's gone. Now, you um, set aside a little extra grout. If one of your major design elements were to come off, um, don't stop. Uh, continue cleaning off your mosaic. Put the design element to the side, the little piece of glass. And when we're all finished, we'll work on putting that back. Looking good. I'm liking it already. So I now I'm going to take my... A terry cloth towel and do a bunch of buffing and cleaning. Get into the corners here a little bit better. You might want to use, I have a little screwdriver here just to sort of um, clean out your corners a little bit better. Continue buffing. Now, you do have that uh, bowl of plain water, and we're going to use the sponge here just on the frame, not on your mosaic, just to clean it off. There we go. Clean off your frame and keep 
buffing. It's really coming to life, isn't it? I'm going to continue buffing and finish this beauty up. Wow, look at these colors pop now. So I've let this sit for about five or ten minutes, and I'm going to come back and just use a plain bottle of, just spray, spray it, mist it lightly, excuse me, with just plain water. And we're going to buff it again. Now, um, buffing, we're pretty uh, aggressive. And if a piece falls off, it happens sometimes. And guess what? I wanted to show you right here, a piece did fall off. And I put it aside, and I just kept buffing and cleaning. So I cleaned it off there as best I could. And I'm going to um, add a little glue right in that spot. If I can get my glue to come out. There we go and replace that piece that fell out. Perfect. Now, that plain grout, I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bitty bit of that grout, that dry grout on that place. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna smush it in there with my finger, and then Give it a spritz of water. Kind of blot it now in this area. And then the glue will set up for you. And I'm real gentle with that part. And you're all done. So no worries if a piece falls off. Just don't stop with your grouting. Keep on grouting and keep on cleaning. Don't worry about that piece that fell off, come back and find it later. Perfect. I like it. You may notice when you've grouted that some of that glue that got on top, you can see it now. The grouting and using a mist of water loosens that up pretty well. You should be able to use a pokey tool. <laughs> I have a dental tool here, here's a screwdriver, a toothpick will work, and if you just give it a little scrape, it'll come right off, no problems whatsoever if you see any glue sticking on top of your glass. Ooh, I see a little one right there. And this is just sort of the cleanup when you're all finished, and all the little detail work. So any glue on top will come right off now. <laughs>